Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Howdy, Cougars. Welcome to a special Tuesday edition of our weekly broadcast. I'm Richard Big Tex Perez. And I'm Zoe Petrie, and today is Tuesday, November 10th. Richard, why are we doing the broadcast today instead of on Wednesday? We're doing the broadcast today because we do not have school tomorrow in honor of our veterans. That's right. Wednesday is November 11th, and that is Veterans Day. But before we begin our special program, we have some special announcements. We want to thank the cafeteria for the delicious taco pie, Spanish rice, and refried beans that we will be enjoying today at lunch. How did I know your special announcement would be about food? We also want to wish a happy early birthday to Connor B., Joshua F., Diana M., and Justin S. Do we have any cougar shout outs today? You bet we do. We have a cougar shout out for James B. from Sierra. Thank you for all the good you've done. We also have a shout out for Lexi P. from Anonymous. You are a really good friend and give the best hugs. Thanks, Richard. But I think you know what I'm going to ask. Yes, Zoe. You also have a cougar shout out. This is also from Anonymous. You have a great smile. And when you're on the broadcast, you do a great job. Thank you for my shout out. Robbie, what else is going on in cougar country? Wow, that was great to hear all of those Cougar shout outs. I love the positivity. Keep it up, Cougars. And now for some announcements. If you are an Akadeka, I hope you are in today's meeting. Mock trial meets on Thursday at 8 a.m. Art 4 and AP Art will meet on Friday during zero period. There is no Native American Club and Wolfpack meeting this week. The next meeting will be after school on Thursday, November 19th at 3.30. If you have questions, please reach out to Ms. Lochner. Athletics. Don't forget to complete your physicals if you want to be eligible for the first day of practice on December 7th. And now back to you in the studio. Thank you, Robbie, for those updates. You know, I've always wondered about the difference between Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Well, Memorial Day is a time to remember those who gave their lives for our country. Veterans Day honors those who have served the country, although it's largely intended to thank living veterans for their sacrifices. I wonder why we honor our veterans on November 11th though. The answer to your question can be found in World War I. As you know, World War I ended on June 28, 1919. Then why isn't Veterans Day in June? Great question. Even though the war officially ended on June 28, the fighting stopped about seven months earlier when the Allies in Germany put forth an armistice or truce. You mean they stopped fighting? Yes. Oh, June, May, April, March, February. Wait, seven months earlier would have been November. We're in November. That's right. And guess which date they stop fighting? The 11th? That's tomorrow. Correct again. Care to guess the hour? Don't tell me. The 11th hour? Yep. Someone was paying attention in Stavner's class. The fighting stopped on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. November 11th became an official holiday to honor our veterans in 1938. Wow. So November 11th has a lot of historic and patriotic significance. Yes, it does. In fact, every year on Veterans Day at exactly 11 a.m., a wreath laying ceremony is held at the tomb of the unknown soldier, soldier in the Arlington National Cemetery. But before we air our special Veterans Day tribute, let's take it to Robbie for the weather. Thank you, Zoe. It sure seems like old man winter is on his way. We have crisp temperatures in the low 60s. Today, we have cloudy skies and a 10% chance of rain. Don't forget to bundle up and bring your umbrella because this cold snap brings a 60% chance of rain on Thursday and Friday. This is a good time to remind our community about taking care of yourselves and each other as we enter winter season. The first reminder is that students should dress warmly and in layers. The second reminder is that if you have any cold or flu symptoms, it is best to stay home and participate in distance learning. The flu and COVID have similar symptoms, even though they are caused by different viruses. And while we have a vaccine for the flu, we don't have a vaccine for COVID. So it's best to play it safe and stay home if you have any of these symptoms. Fever, cough, shortness of breath, tiredness, sore throat, runny nose, body aches, headaches, vomiting, or diarrhea. Remember, you should always let your teacher and Danny Page know when you are not going to be zooming in or if you are staying home for a day or two to rest. 
And finally, our COVID procedures will not change during the winter months. We will just need to be more diligent and take extra precautions. This means we should wear our masks, keep our distance and wash our hands. And now back to you in the studio. Thank you for those important updates. As you know, today is a special day. That's right. We want to thank our veterans for all of their sacrifices. Cougars, I would like to invite you to join me as we pay tribute to those in our Cougar family who have served our country. And in honor of our veterans, we put together a video montage of our Cougar family. Hi guys, Ms. Rice here. Mrs. Pena over here. I'm a United States Air Force veteran. I served for four years. And I served in the United States Navy for five years. In Georgia, I went to college after high school for two years. And after running out of money and deciding what I wanted to do, I decided to join the Air Force. I had a few military, a few family members that served, and my brother went into the Air Force and he got to see Spain and Puerto Rico, so I thought, hey, that's the best place to go. I joined the Navy right out of high school. I was 17 years old. Um, I had a couple options for military branches, but my dad, being a Marine Corps vet, um, he would not allow me to speak to Marine Corps or Army recruiters, so it was either Navy or Air Force, and Navy was on the Upper Lake Campus the most back then, so that's who I went with. <laughs> had a lot of fun and great experiences. I got to travel the world, I got to serve overseas, and one thing that I didn't realize when I joined is the opportunity to travel. It helped me grow, it helped me become a better adult and a better human being, and I wish that my friends back home knew how much experience and all the great traveling they would get to do, plus they paid for college. My first year in was probably my toughest. Being away from Upper Lake is such a small town and small community and you know everyone and they ship you off to Chicago, which is the total opposite. Um, I had a really hard time, but once I got into it, I loved it. I met people that will be my family for the rest of my life. Um, I got stationed at a very small, um, almost secret place in the Navy that not a lot of people know about. I worked on hovercrafts, it was amazing. I met my husband. Um, and I got the great college benefits that go from it. The Navy paid for all my college and I still have benefits left and I didn't have to pay a penny. So it was nice and getting out at 23, having that as my backup plan was a great start for me. Hi, I'm Ron Rosser, Director of Technology here and uh, I'm a retired Marine. My wife Lisa's a retired Marine. Uh, I joined the service from in 1975. I was in for 20 years before I retired. I was in technology. I joined the Marine Corps to get an education, and that's what I did. My <laughs> wife was in uh, uh, personnel and administration, and then she became a COBOL programmer, and she got out after 12 years. So besides getting an education, the Marine Corps also taught me uh, discipline and uh, and responsibility and gave me a good work ethic and I appreciate that. Hi, my name is Becky Toback and my connection to the military is my son, Samuel. Sam is a student at Baylor University, but he's in ROTC, Army ROTC, and he will be enlisting or being commissioned, I guess, when he graduates from college. And he is seeking to be a pilot at this point. So I don't know what his future exactly holds, but we're trusting that he's gonna be there for us and protect the freedoms of the United States of America. Whatever. Hi, this is uh, Paul Holt, math teacher at Upper Lake High School. I just wanted to do a shout out to my dad who joined the Air Force back in 1955 as a 17 year old. Spent 22 years, traveled the world, and it was one of the most amazing experiences growing up. I got to see all but one state and visit about 15 different countries around the world. So it was a great experience. Uh, we'll miss him and uh, love my dad very much. Thanks for serving. Good morning. My name is Dale. I'm your bus driver. I own a business and I'm a Vietnam veteran. My introduction to the military was through the draft, which uh, if it got to you, left you with three choices. You either let them throw you in the military, you join, or you go to college. Well, I tried college, not for me, and I wasn't gonna let them put me in. So I checked out the Air Force, and with the skills I had, I became an aircraft electrician. 
tough at first. After that, it was gravy. It was beautiful. It was an absolute adventure. Taiwan, Thailand, Okinawa, Florida. I was very happy four years. I would do it again. Okay, I'm Mr. G. I'm an education specialist. I work with special education here at Upper Lake High School and Middle School. My military background, I didn't personally serve, but my dad did. He retired as a gunnery sergeant. Um, I remember moving around a lot because he was always being deployed and stationed somewhere. In fact, I was born in Hawaii, as a matter of fact. But I did get the opportunity to work with the Wounded Warrior Project, and that's how I served uh, for a few years. I did that before I got into the education uh, arena. Hi, I'm Rob Sanchez, maintenance. Uh, served in the Army for 17 years. Uh, retired medically. I did the uh, field artillery. One combat tour in Iraq and multiple missions across the U.S. after 9-11. Uh, joined the military to provide support to everybody else fighting for our freedoms and get some career and uh, retirement benefits from the military. And it's helped me continue on with this position here at the school and make everything better for everybody here in the community. My dad was in the 82nd Airborne in Vietnam from 1968 to 1969. He was the real deal when it came to being a highly decorated war hero. You can never question his patriotism and he never missed a Veterans Day celebration. He didn't speak much of his time in Vietnam, but he did speak about his fellow combat soldiers and he told base camp stories of his with his soldiers who came from all over the country, all different cultures, religions, and all walks of life. There wasn't anybody that he didn't find good in. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about him. I miss you, Dad. I love you. And to all the veterans out there, thank you for your service and happy Veterans Day. That's all for today's special broadcast. Until next time. Go, go Mighty Cougars. Cougars. Woo, no mistakes. Good job.